Oh, what a time to be alive. Us horror hounds are about to bestow upon the best holiday of the year. Can you feel that? Huh? Can you feel it, Captain Compost? Good old Halloween. That feeling of the cold air hitting your face, the leaves rustling down the street, families taking part decorating their houses with the creepiest of props, and lights to set the mood all over the block. There is something to love for everyone when it comes to Halloween. <laughs> Horror movies, fairs, parades, candy, and much more. But one of the best festivities around Halloween goes unnoticed to those easily squeamish at heart. A place you go to have people scare the living daylights out of you. Haunts are very well known to some, especially those thrill seekers who love a good scare. But what if some of these haunts are more than meets the eye? What if a night out that should be fun turns into a night of blood and carnage? 2019's Haunt, directed by Scott Beck and Brian Woods, creates a thrill ride nightmare so good, so malevolent, that it may be one of the best horror movies you never saw. All it takes is a little hope and a little faith in developing a script for it to be made into a Hollywood feature. Haunt's creators, Scott Beck and Brian Woods, doubled down on their luck and wrote Haunt while also writing the quasi-horror silent film, A Quiet Place. Funny thing was both Scott and Brian didn't believe their scripts would be shopped around and purchased, but here we are in amazement and wonder on how thoughtful and intense both movies came out to be. A Quiet Place became a mega box office hit, while Haunt became a streaming platform sensation. Cabin Fever and Hostel director Eli Roth came across the Haunt script and decided to lend his creative and producing credits into the production. He went yacht on that one! Haunt the fucking lands down street! It was to the directorial duo's surprise that Eli Roth was interested in helping develop the film. Roth emphasized that their script needed to develop a characterization within the group of friends before before embarking their nightmare-fueled journey of terror. Scott Beck and Brian Wood stated in an interview about Eli Roth joining the production, He's a great ambassador for the horror genre, and we weren't entirely sure what we would be getting into. He's known for these extreme torture sequences, but it was the complete opposite. He said, let me help you develop the first 15 minutes and just expand the characters as much as possible. And we were like, yes, the characters are so important. We want to love these characters. And he helped us take it to the next level. Haunt establishes our main protagonist, Harper, going out with her friends on Halloween night after breaking up with her crazy ex-boyfriend. Her girlfriends, Bailey, Angela, and Mallory, decide to hang at what appears to be a local college party. However, they want to up the ante and visit a haunt attraction with their friends, Evan and Nathan. They notice a truck following them and they decide to veer off the road and hide from the weird truck, a truck similar to Harper's ex-boyfriend from the beginning of the movie. It's there a giant street light turns on saying, Haunted House, which leads our brave group of young souls to park and show up to the front gates. One of the haunt performers, a clown who isn't one for talking, gives them waivers to sign and a key that stores their phones into a locker. Chances are they probably won't ever see their possessions again, but let's see what happens. The clown opens a giant industrial garage door and leads them in for a night of terror and despair. Now, I want to emphasize just how good this film picks up once our fodder food enters the haunt. It captures what every one of us feel when we enter these types of places. Pure anticipation and also dread. The group is led to a plexiglass room where they see another performer wearing an old witch mask drag a body bag in and open it up. When opening the bag, it's unveiled to be a young adult, perhaps a performer begging for help. The witch takes a hot fire poker and burns her face which causes our group of thrill seekers to howl in excitement. The smoke fills the plexiglass room with the witch and victim inside causing them to disappear once the smoke settles. Harper thinks this isn't a performance for the ages while her friends laugh and enjoy what they just witnessed. 
It's a tall order to capture a movie that takes place on Halloween to feel like an actual Halloween film. If you lose the tone and atmosphere within the story that centers around the holiday, you lose me. Few films have achieved this victory, save for of course movies like Halloween, House of a Thousand Corpses, Beetlejuice, or Trick or Treat. The movie's directors even had one of their production days during Halloween night with the production crew wearing their costumes while creating gory movie mayhem. Creating that true Halloween atmosphere and haunt comes down to the production, the set, and art design which is perfectly executed here. Set designer Kay Wolfley wonderfully creates this spooky, eerie atmosphere around the film. The opening scene hooks the viewer right in which opens on a cold, windy Halloween night in a college town which truly embodies that real Halloween feel and aesthetic. Pumpkins, Halloween decor, swaying trees, and those fall leaves blowing down the sidewalk are front and center within the opening frame. But the real magnum opus of Haunt set design is the actual maze, which is the center of the movie. It was originally supposed to be built in a warehouse in Atlanta, but the directors set their eyes on a dairy factory in Kentucky. They also got inspiration from visiting real haunts around their shooting locations during production. Each room is wonderfully crafted to capture a different feel. We see Hannah and her island of misfit toys journey around rooms with coffins that lead to trap doors, and a room focused entirely on putting your hand in several holes that you need to identify called Name That Body Part. There are numerous touch tunnels, dizzying illusions, fake doors, rooms with swaying knives, and body traps that cause extreme harm. There's an unforgettable room that sends shivers down my spine with multiple ghosts standing still in silence, only to realize that one of these mannequins is human. Each room has something unique and extremely terrifying to watch, especially for those of us with arachnophobia. Yikes. The Haunt in Haunt is a character of its own. It's filled with so much tension that each setup and reveal was entirely fresh to the horror genre. With horror films in the slasher category, you have maybe one or two killers on the loose creating the perfect whodunit scenario. Haunt gives you not one or two killers, but a whopping six killers, all intent on making your life a living hell. There is Mitch, aka Casper the not-so-friendly ghost, that gives our group false hope, stopping the haunt when he sees them hurt and bleeding. Sorry we're a little extreme here, says Mitch, which gave me a little chuckle considering this guy is totally playing these poor bastards. Then there is the witch that loves to use her favorite weapon, a fire poker, right to the face and head to some of her victims. There's the ticket taker, the clown, who has a fetish for creating booby traps hidden in plain sight. Our pitchfork friend, Mr. Devil, is perhaps the most sinister and malicious with how he handles his game of cat and mouse. Then there's Mr. Charlie Chainsaw, who dons a nice zombie mask and runs around Leatherface style. And lastly, our vampire, who needs to earn his keep first before being inducted into this cult of bloodthirsty humanoids. But the real fun is knowing what's eventually unveiled under those masks. I was taken back once our killers show their true faces, which is the real horror that is about to be shown to our poor group. It's a very memorable setup that separates Haunt from the rest of the slasher pack out there. Our characters end up going through some awful things, up until the final room where false hope is very indicative. This is not a winnable game for any innocents involved when they crawl towards the end of that finish line. Haunt serves an important theme throughout, fear the unknown, and always keep your guard up, which plays to Harper's strength. She's our Ripley, our Sarah Connor. Because she has dealt with this pain in the past, she harnesses that inner strength through each scenario that she's stuck in. If you've seen 2011's Your Next, directed by Adam Wingard, Harper plays a lighter version to the protagonist, Aaron, but that's a story for another time. While most of the cast is filled with unknowns, including Harper, they all do a wonderful job being believable in their roles. Stupidity is usually prevalent in most slashers, 
running up the stairs, stopping to look back, and many other flaws that slashers visually convey, but the characters in Haunt are fully believable in what would happen within the actions unfolding in front of them. Dare I say that they're perfectly written by being cautious and not careless, which is a nice thing to watch. Like Marvel's big bad Thanos says in Infinity War. Perfectly balanced, this whole thing should be. Hunt was only in production for a month in Covington, Kentucky and premiered in the Popcorn Frights Film Festival on August 8, 2019. The film's reception was so popular that Shudder decided to pick up the movie to stream on their platform as well as a limited release only grossing $2.6 when all was said and done. In my opinion, this movie could have competed with the most recent horror flicks that were given a wide theatrical release. It just lacked marketing and word of mouth. On Shudder, it was the most watched movie premiere on their platform in 2019, and rightfully so. Currently, it has a critical reception of 70% on Rotten Tomatoes and a whopping 100% audience score. The proof is in the pudding with these two scores, everyone. There is something beautiful about an unknown horror film that grabs you by the throat and never lets go. It grips you tight, gasping for air until the very last frame. Haunt is almost a perfect horror flick that fucks with the minds of its viewers. There is nothing more terrifying than a movie that can potentially happen in real life. It also has many twists and turns for a basic premise which keeps viewers on our toes. And the cinematography by Ryan Samuel is fear-inducing, showing our main stars stuck in very tight spaces within a maze or the horrors that lurk around every corner. For a movie that snuck under everyone's radar with no marketing to its name, it has great repeat value. It deserves its own designated night in October to watch each year. It also reinforces the idea that clowns are always a telling sign for bad things to come. If you stay away from clowns, you might just be spared. Either that or you'll be at the mercy of their sick and twisted game just like poor Harper and the crew. But if you decide to be ballsy this Halloween, go to your local haunt. Just make sure it's not in an abandoned area, off the road, and not entirely away from civilization. You'll thank me later.